Hey friends, tonight we are going to be dining at Shula Steakhouse right here at Disney Swan and Dolphin Resort. This has always been one of my all-time favorite steaks on Walt Disney World property and I was never able to actually make a whole video just on Shula's and a lot of people always ask me if I have one so I figured today would be the perfect day to do so. Anywho, let's go do this. Shula Steakhouse is in the dolphin side of the resort and it was raining outside so I ducked into the convention center so that I can get there and get out of the rain and I think I'm the only person over here. It's kind of eerie but it's really cool. I've never been over on this side the convention area. Recently I was just here and we ate at Todd English's Blue Zoo for Magical Dining Month But I've come to Shula's a couple of times and like I said, I never got to make like a whole video about it It's always just been like in between but this is always one of my all-time favorite places to get a steak It also has one of the prettiest lobbies out there I love everything in here from the lights hanging from the ceiling to the floors that kind of look like Spaceship Earth it is beautiful over here on the dolphin side and it even has a little lobby bar right here that has some really good drinks and their own beer i like how they have a little droid photo opportunity for hollywood studios inside the lobby here you can just grab yourself a little picture isn't that really cool right in the lobby star wars galaxy's edge disney's hollywood studios and look at this little guy just hanging out waiting for people to come take some photos with them in case you are unaware, Shula stands for Don Shula, the NFL's most winningest head coach. He has over 347 like career wins, and sadly he did pass away, and he has tons of restaurants all over the United States, some in Arizona, some in Texas, some in Virginia, and of course the one that's right here in Walt Disney World, and they're known for their amazing steaks. We are going to head right on into Shula's. I don't even have a reservation. It was really hard to get a reservation, but I know that they do accept walk-ups sometimes, and they do have a lounge area where you can order some food, but I just love walking through here. So much NFL history. Larry Little, like these are all rooms named after football players. Larry Zonka. Larry Zonka was probably one of the all-time greatest fullbacks out there. So cool. The restaurant itself does have a dress code, so I'm going to be taking off my hat when I'm dining, but also take a look at the 50th anniversary elevator. I'm telling you, the 50th anniversary is everywhere, on planes, trains, and elevator doors. As I thought, they are fully booked for the night, but they do have a lounge area that is first come, first serve, so we're going to be able to go over there and get the uh, whole entire menu. So we're going to actually be able to enjoy without a reservation, and I love it. It is so beautiful in here. We got ourselves a nice little high top table here at the lounge area and now we're going to look over the menu. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get the cowboy ribeye because I love ribeye steaks and like I said this one is one of my favorites but they have other selections too so maybe we'll get maybe an appetizer along with it. I kind of want to show you guys as much as I can because this place is really something great like it's really special to me I love coming here. I love how this restaurant looks on the inside. It's a little bit dark, but it sets the perfect mood. And we've already got ourselves some nice bread. And I can't wait to show you this bread. It's so delicious. And the tables have little lights on them. I know it's probably flickering a little bit, but uh, let's go over the menu. Here is a look at the starters. They've got a nice New Orleans style shrimp, which I've never had before. So I was thinking about trying it this time. And then also they have uh, some braised Swedish style meatballs, but for soup and salad, they've got French onion soup, a roasted beet salad, and a couple of non-steak entrees too. So if you're not a steak person, they do have a daily market fish, some salmon, some crab cake. They even have a prime rib. I wouldn't mind trying the prime rib one day, but we came here for the steaks. We came for these guys right here. The steaks are singly priced, so the prices you see next to it is just for the steaks. The 10 ounce filet is $61. The 16 ounce New York strip is $68. The 22 ounce cowboy ribeye is $69. And the 24 ounce black Angus porterhouse is $63. And that's just the steak alone. If you want to add a side to it, they have the sides down here, and it's just like your basic sides. They've got asparagus, broccoli, baked potato, macaroni, cheese, mashed potatoes, spinach, and then sautéed mushrooms, and they're $11 to $13, and I think I'm going to probably just get what I normally get. 
So as you can see, it's definitely a little bit pricey and it's not somewhere I would come often. It's just special occasions. I think the last time I came here, I came for my birthday in uh, 2019, I believe. So that was a long time ago. Let's take a look at the bread here. And we're definitely gonna wanna save some of this bread because I love actually dipping up, like uh, I like like running the bread through the leftover juices of the steak. I feel like that's the best way, but man oh man, look at this. I like how they like, have it all wrapped up in a towel like a little baby, <laughs> little baby bread. Take a look at this flaky, crunchy bread. Watch, you can hear it. Isn't that insane? It is so, so good. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely going to be saving some of this bread to uh, get all that steak juice and actually swoop up and clean the plate. Seriously, this bread is so good, but I can't, I can't eat all of it. I gotta, I gotta hang on to it. You don't want to get full on bread when you got a nice steak coming. And we also got the uh, New Orleans shrimp because I wanted to try something different today. So we got shrimp and steak coming. So bread's gonna have to wait. I decided on getting the 22 ounce cowboy ribeye and we're gonna go mid-rare with char on the outside like a Pittsburgh style. It is absolutely my favorite way to eat a steak and I, I thought about getting the porterhouse. The porterhouse is a little bit of filet and a little bit of a New York strip both on one cut uh, but the ribeye is like the most flavorful like steak. And that's why it's also the most expensive. And I love the ribeyes. I love ribeyes better than I love fillets. First things first, the New Orleans style shrimp. And take a look at these bad boys. You get four shrimp, but they are humongous. And they've got a nice little spicy cream sauce to them. And I cannot wait to try them. They look so good. Oh man, I haven't had good, good shrimp in a while. And these are gonna look like they are fantastic. Look at the steam coming off those shrimps. They look so good. Okay, <laughs> first bite. Here we go. We're just gonna go right in here. I'm gonna take it from right here. Ooh. Wow, these shrimps are amazing. And the sauce is so good. And it's not even spicy. You would think it's like a little bit spicy, but no, these are the best shrimp I think I've ever had. It's so flavorful, you just get a mouthful of flavor, and I love it. I, I'm a little sad that there's only four, but it's okay because we have a huge steak coming, uh, but I could order this like as a dinner. Like order like two of them and have like 10 shrimp, it would be definitely worth it. Seriously, I'm gonna be so sad to see these actually finished. Like, <laughs> they are that amazing. And they're just so, oh man, what, what an amazing start to this meal. <laughs> and just because there's only four shrimp, don't sleep on the sauce. Like, it is so good. And that's why you got this little bread here, so you can just soak it all up. A lot of bread they give you here, because I got the bread from the bread basket, and now I got these little toasty things. I'll give you a little pro tip that my server actually gave me too. He said try the bread basket or the bread service with the sauce instead of the toasting ones. And honestly, I like the bread service better. So the bread that came in the basket with the sauce for the New Orleans shrimp, amazing. I couldn't find anywhere to put my hat down because we are actually on like a high top and uh, I figured I'd just put it right on top of the little light there and it kind of looks like it's just floating and I don't know, this looks really artsy. They gave me a little Shula's Reserve sign. Uh, I asked because I wanted to take a picture with like the Shula like uh, saying or the name uh, and uh, they gave me this so now it looks really fancy, doesn't it? If you guys have been watching the videos for a while, you know that I kind of have a rotating list of my top five favorite steaks uh, on Walt Disney World property. Right now, Space 220 with the 24 ounce coffee space rubbed ribeye is at the number one spot. But before that, it was the cowboy ribeye here. And Space 220 kind of took it because I love like a char on the outside. So a charred coffee space rub is perfect for me. Now, it might not be perfect for everybody, but that's just how I like my steaks. But but we're gonna see if this one can actually rekindle that number one spot and once we're done eating we'll talk about all of my other picks and I'll give you an updated list and like I said it's always changing because we're always out finding new amazing food experiences and trying different steaks and here it is take a look at that a beautiful 
22 ounce cowboy ribeye and I don't think they season it with anything special just some salt and pepper and it is perfection you got nice grill marks on it and it's got a good crust I can't wait to cut into this I mean this looks so phenomenal I'm gonna enjoy it very very much I was a little torn between going with some asparagus and some mashed potatoes and I do remember I really love the mashed potatoes here so got mashed potatoes to go with the steak then we can scoop sea potato a little bit later on and get a little bit of steak and potato in one bite because you know I love to do that and just take a look at these creamy mashed potatoes isn't that amazing they are perfect all right here we go first cut we're gonna cut right on in there oh wow that looks perfect oh what a juicy steak first bite and then we're gonna add some mashed potatoes to it and we'll see how it goes here This is amazing. So, so good. And the reason I like the ribeyes compared to the fillets is because you get all that fat in there. And that what that's what makes it very flavorful. Fillets are very lean. So if you don't like the fat, uh, then you'll like the fillets. But give me one of these ribeyes all day. <laughs> the best thing about this steak is there's nothing like really overly fancy about it. It's a wet age. It's not a dry age. And like I said, I think it's just basic salt and pepper seasoning. And it's just so good. You can taste the grill marks on it. You can taste the flavor. And it's just cooked perfectly. And I don't know what it is about Shula's, but they know how to make some steaks. Now we're gonna have to grab some of our mashed potatoes and do a little steak combo here. A little steak potato combo. Scoopsy potato and then perfect. One bite. That steak did not stand a chance. We still got a lot of good meat on there. The best parts are actually close to the bone. So we're gonna kind of pick away at it. But so amazing, so delicious. The mashed potatoes, really top notch. So creamy and a nice buttery garlic taste to them. And put them together and you got a wonderful combination. Honestly, they have some amazing offerings for dessert but it's not gonna happen. I mean, they have some creme brulee, a nice key lime pie, but that steak is so much and I am completely full. So I think we're gonna actually head on out and then we'll talk about the meal a little bit, but absolutely amazing. And it's definitely well worth it. I think my whole entire check came to $100. So that's with the uh, shrimp, the steak, and the side which like I said is a little bit pricey and uh, it's kind of like about the same amount I would have spent. Actually, no, I spent more at Space 220. Actually, I did spend a lot more at Space 220 and uh, yeah, I think we're gonna head out. Well, that was amazing. And dare I say, I think Shula's has reclaimed their number one spot. They have taken the number one spot back from Space 220 only because of the simplicity and the value. I paid a lot more at Space 220 and when I was eating it, I was like, wow, this is amazing because of the coffee space rub and that actually having a little char on it was perfect for me. But now that I had Shula's again, I was like, okay, this is just downright good steak cooking and that's what I like about it. The price is cheaper. The uh, portion size is a little bit smaller because 24 ounces of Space 220 and 22 ounces here, but you can't beat just Shula's. Like, it is that good. I mean, overall, I think it is my number one again. So we're gonna say Shula's number one, then we're gonna say Space 220 number two, then we're gonna do the Cowboy Ribeye at California Grill at number three, and then recently this week, I had Walt's Roast Beef Hash on the filet at the Brown Derby, and that's number four, and then number five, good old Lee Cellier. And that's it, that's my top five. Now that we got done with our dinner, since we're actually hanging out over here, I thought it'd be nice to walk on over to the Yacht and Beach Club. And then later on, we're gonna actually go meet up with some friends over at the boardwalk. 
my friends Jackie and Mark are getting married this week and they're actually getting married at Epcot and they invited me and tonight they're going to be celebrating at the boardwalk so I actually want to say congratulations to them and I'm going to go celebrate with them and uh, kind of just you know have a good time but first like I said I kind of want to walk around uh, Yacht and Beach Club because I haven't been over here in a while and I do love Yacht and Beach Club it's so beautiful Sadly, it looks like we might be getting some rain though. I feel the raindrops are coming. Uh-oh, and now here comes a cart full of towels. Wow, they actually dry pretty fast. <laughs> oh, it's called Bigfoot. See ya, friend. Look at him go. <laughs> I love it. Take a look at the cool I'm celebrating pins they're giving out to everybody for Jackie and Mark. And that's really awesome. I put it on my hat. That's where I like to actually put all my things now. Fun fact, I never stayed at Yacht Club before. I've stayed at Beach Club before, but I've never stayed on Yacht Club side. And some people really love it over here. Uh, let me know in the comments if you stayed at both of them, which one you prefer. Do you like Beach Club or do you like Yacht Club better? I mean, they both share Disney's greatest like pool. This is hands down the best Disney Resort pool because it has like the sand bottom and you can use it either staying at yacht or beach but I always wondered what it would be like to stay at yacht so one day maybe I will and I could bring my dog too so little Gracie Goo can come not only do I think it has the best Disney Resort pool but I'm pretty positive it has the best Disney Resort water slide too because this one is epic it's actually this gigantic ship right here and the water slide is right here and it goes all the way across the walkway and down into the pool. Isn't that like super epic? Like that is a huge water slide for a resort. I feel like it belongs in like a water park, not just at our Disney World Resort. Since we're so close to Epcot and you can actually walk there, I think maybe we'll hop in to World Showcase real quick and grab ourselves a coffee uh, because like I said, we're gonna be uh, going somewhere later on tonight. And uh, yeah, I mean, why not? When you're this close to Epcot, it's you know really hard not to just pop in and say, hello Epcot. Total walk time from the Swan and Dolphin uh, coming around Yacht Club and Beach Club side is probably about 10 minutes maybe. 10 minutes to get from Yacht and Beach Club all the way over to Epcot and it's a beautiful stroll. I think it's uh, probably a lot shorter if you actually cut and go through Boardwalk side. One of these days I think it'd be fun to experiment and see which way is the quickest to get here. Or you could always take a boat. The Friendship Boats actually take you from the resorts to Epcot and to Hollywood Studios. I remember when Disney first announced that they were going to put a Skyliner or a gondola system in and people kind of weren't happy. I mean, I wasn't even happy. I was very skeptical, but now I can't imagine what it would look like without it. I mean, it's really beautiful just watching the gondolas go back and forth and I really do enjoy it. So strange, right? And just like that, we are in Epcot. We'll grab ourselves some Joffreys right here in between the United Kingdom and Canada. And I don't know if I should get the pumpkin game changer because I really love that or if I should try something different. But I am pretty hooked on the pumpkin and Halloween is almost over. Take a look at the signature cocktail they got made with top shelf vodka. Tea Breeze, a refreshing blend of black tea and frozen lemon topped with vodka. But I think I'm just going to stick to what I love. The pumpkin game changer. I think it's like my fourth time getting this. And wow, I think Joffrey's is more expensive than Starbucks. Six dollars and thirty-nine cents for a coffee. A little steep. Game changer? Is this the game changer? Uh game changer. Yep, that's the game changer. <laughs> I love how she yelled out, this is the game changer, because it is, it is a game changer. But $6.39, I don't remember Joffrey's being more expensive than Starbucks. And like, that kind of like was a shock to me. But it's still good coffee, very good, I love it. Nothing like running over to Epcot to grab a coffee and then making your way back on out. That's the life, I'm so happy that I'm able to do things like this. It's seriously something very special. Actually on the way out, Alice is out talking to guests, so maybe we'll go say hi to Alice before we make our way back on out into our World Gateway there. My hat, uh, you have a friend who uh, likes hat too, the Mad Hatter. Is he?
Oh, well, if he made me one, I hope it'd be fedorable. <laughs> holy moly, it's like a bonus. First, we got Alice and... and holy moly, this is like a bonus. First, we got Alice, and now Carol's playing some music. Before I actually head back out, I know I'm making my way there, but we had to stop and see Alice and Carol. I ran into my friend Felicia, and we wanted to say hi to Dan. Hi, Danny. Look at that. A we... pop up with me. See, perfect. <laughs> wow. Within minutes, uh, Alice was just here, and now Mary's here. It's like they're a tag team, and they tagged each other in and out, and that's really awesome. So cool. We saw Alice, and we went over and saw Carol. Then we saw Felicia, and then we came back over and Mary. And with that, I think we are done here today. What a fun day. Uh, dinner at Shula's was amazing. And then walking around Yacht and Beach Club, making our way over here to Epcot. And now we're going to celebrate uh, Jackie and Mark getting married. Congratulations, you two. I hope you guys have a wonderful life together. I'm so excited for the wedding itself and also to hang out tonight. Anywho's, hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.